Pharmacoepidemiology, defining safety of therapeutics in dermatology. Have you ever worried about the risk of side effects from a medication? For example, does treatment of psoriasis with biologics increase the risk of cancer? Does treatment of acne with isotretinoin cause inflammatory bowel disease? Will JAK inhibitors used to treat alopecia areata or eczema increase the risk of cardiovascular events? These are fundamental questions about safety of medications that the science of pharmacoepidemiology answers when applied to study drugs used for many years in large populations of patients. So what is pharmacoepidemiology? Simply put, it is the science of studying the use and effects of drugs in large populations. Let's back it up a bit. When new drugs are brought to market, they've already been approved by regulatory agencies typically based on data gathered from randomized controlled trials in small populations, like a few hundred to a few thousand patients. While randomized controlled trials are the gold standard for showing the efficacy and safety of a drug, they have some limitations with regards to fully understanding the safety of a medication. First, clinical trials are often performed in relatively healthy people who only have the disease being treated with the tested drug. In the real world, many people have multiple illnesses at one time. Additionally, older patients and children are typically not included in adequate proportions in randomized controlled trials, making trial results difficult to generalize into a large, diverse patient population. Furthermore, initial randomized controlled trials typically monitor exposure to the medication over a period of only weeks to months, providing minimal information on the safety of long-term exposure. Finally, randomized controlled trials are designed to detect relatively common side effects and may not pick up rare events. As a result, initial clinical trials can usually accurately describe only adverse events that occur in about 1 in 100 patients and often cannot detect rare adverse events that occur in fewer than 1 in 1,000 patients. To give you an idea, a 1 in 1,000 risk is about the same as your chances of needing emergency treatment in the next year from injury by a glass bottle or jar. However, statistically rare effects, which occur in 1 in 1,000 patients or fewer per year, can include heart attacks, cancer, suicidality, or inflammatory diseases such as Crohn's, multiple sclerosis, or psoriasis, and therefore are important to consider especially when a drug is intended to be used in hundreds of thousands of patients. Once a new medication is approved for use, adverse drug reactions may be reported spontaneously. For example, in the US, the Food and Drug Administration FDA, collects reports from patients and clinicians through MedWatch. Case report data and other descriptive studies like case series, cross-sectional studies, and ecologic studies can be used together to identify safety signals which are hypotheses about potential causation between a drug and an adverse event. Once a hypothesis is determined, analytic study methods, including case-controlled studies, cohort studies, and further clinical trials, are used to test the hypothesis set forth by the descriptive study to confirm or refute a safety signal. As with all scientific approaches, there are sources of error or bias that need to be considered. Bias is any systematic error in the selection of subjects or the collection of information on subjects that results in an incorrect estimate of the exposures, in this case, medicines, effect on the outcome. A special type of bias that affects pharmacoepidemiology studies is confounding by indication, which means the disease or symptoms of the disease being treated are also risk factors for the outcome being studied. An example of safety signal detection and confounding by indication in 1982, isotretinoin was approved by the FDA to treat severe acne based on clinical trials of the drug in fewer than 100 people. Two years later, a warning was added to the package insert about a possible association between inflammatory bowel disease and isotretinoin based on a small number of spontaneous reports associating the drug with the disease. These case reports were interpreted as a safety signal. But remember, a safety signal is a hypothesis about a drug's association with a side effect. Results of descriptive studies alone are rarely sufficient to establish a causal relationship between the potential side effect and the medication. 
Decades after the initial safety signal was identified, analytical studies, in this case cohort and case control designs on over 55,000 acne patients treated with isotretinoin and nearly 1 million controls, emerged to test whether inflammatory bowel disease was indeed associated with isotretinoin or just occurring in the same patient by chance or due to shared biology. For example, patients with severe acne may be inherently at higher risk of inflammatory bowel disease or by confounding effects of other factors like some tetracyclines used to treat acne. Researchers concluded from these analytical studies that there is insufficient evidence to suggest a causal relationship between isotretinoin and an increased risk of inflammatory bowel disease. New medications are being rapidly developed. Therefore, pharmacoepidemiology research is increasingly important to provide understanding of drug safety after approval. Understanding pharmacoepidemiology study design, validity, and the complexity of causal associations is crucial to guide decisions for individual patients, public health, and public policy.